Last week on the channel, I introduced the new trail I'm working on. One that I've codenamed Stone Starlet. After scouting out the terrain, I divided up the area into three zones. The top section is called the Grove, a lush open forest with plenty of options for lines. The Badlands in the middle is a logging clear cut with a whole mess of slash to clear. And at the bottom, the jungle, with a dense forest with a few interesting options. Next, I marked where I wanted the trail to be with these little flags. By moving the flags around, I was able to see the line visually and adjust it easily. So with a little more than half the line flagged, it's time to break ground on the actual trail. The goal is to cut in the top section of trail and get our first jump rideable by the end of the weekend. So to start, we'll need to clear all the fallen trees blocking the trail. And for that, we'll need some power. So a bit of shopping. And $600 later, I picked up something that should do the job. A chainsaw is pretty mandatory for this kind of work, as hand tools just won't cut it. Yes. Also, I've got some protective gear for operating the saw. These chaps will protect my legs in case of a kickback event. And I've got a helmet with hearing and eye protection. And as anything with a motor, chainsaws are pretty fun to use. They've got a ton of power and they tear through these old logs in no time. It's pretty satisfying to be honest. That being said, it's important to be careful. Fallen trees can be tensioned in odd ways and releasing that pressure as you cut into them can be really dangerous. Not to mention they're really heavy, so if they fall or roll onto you, you're in a bit of trouble. It's also easy to have a log pinch your saw as you cut into it, trapping it in place. So the solution is to use a wedge. Just bang it in there after you made the initial cut and it will prevent the cut from closing up onto your saw. As it turns out, the forest is home to some cool creatures, like this salamander. Pretty curious little fella. Over time, the chain on your saw will need sharpening, and it's pretty easy to do. Just follow these four steps. Step one, clamp down the saw with your stump vise. Step two, get out your file and look at it a bit. Step three, realize you don't know what the hell you're doing and watch a video on YouTube about sharpening chainsaws. Step four, sharpen chainsaw. And it's as easy as that. After a bunch more clearing in the grove, I was able to break out into the badlands. Since the loggers have taken a lot of trees here, there weren't a lot of big logs to clear. Now that we've cleared all the big stuff off our planned route, we can start cutting trail. And we've got a tool made exactly for this job. It's called a rogue hoe, and I picked it up from a local company called Cascadia Trail Builder Supply. One side has a kind of sharpened blade that easily cuts into the terrain, while the other side works more as a rake. This will be our main tool for cutting trail. We've also got a shovel, a rake, some loppers, and a folding saw to round out the quiver. We'll start working on the top of my line in the grove. There's a lot of interesting terrain up here to take advantage of, and we're quickly into shaping some berms. The weather out in the mountains doesn't always cooperate though. <laughs> so when cutting trail, you're basically shaping the ground to be what you want it to be. And the most common way to cut a trail is the bench cut, which basically creates a flat surface in a slope. But in order to have solid ground to ride on, we need to cut past the loam on the top. Loam is basically what the forest floor is made of. It's all the stuff that falls out of the trees, rot logs, moss, all that kind of thing. It can be really nice to ride on, but since it's loose and uncompacted, the grip tends to be low. But if you dig down deep enough, you'll eventually hit what the folks in the Pacific Northwest call gold. Basically, non-organic dirt. This stuff is great for your trail surface as it shapes and compacts nicely. 
So when the trail doesn't ride well on the loamy surface, I'll remove the loam until I get to the gold underneath. But gold isn't the only thing you can build trail out of. Rocks work great to fill up space. And Bobby has found one higher up on the mountain. Oh, you got, you're got you rolling a big rock down the hill. Oh God, here we go. How far down is it gonna go? Stop, stop, stop. Oh, shit. shit. I gotta get it back up. <laughs> Should we just roll it up the hill or? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Oh, you're stronger than I am, dude. Okay, here we go. Uh, where did you get it from? Uh, one of the corners up there. <laughs> you rolled it a long way, huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nope. All right, almost there. <laughs> and all of this to straighten out the run in for this jump I'm building. It uses a natural dip in the terrain but the low spot is just a little too low. So to make it work, I filled in the bottom and kind of bermed it out. I also dug a hole, or what is known as a gold mine, next to the trail to get the quality dirt I need. We're pretty lucky here because the train isn't overly rocky and you can pretty much dig anywhere to find gold. But you'll never get what you're working on quite right without some testing. So let's see how this works. Uh, even though I haven't cleared the landing yet. <laughs> Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we'd better work on the landing, which is going to be a berm. So, after removing the top layer of loam and another gold mine later, we've got a pretty decent berm. Let's test it out again with hiking boots and no knee pads. Okay. Sick. Sick. That wasn't too bad. It works pretty decent, but I think it'll still need a little more tuning. But we'll wait for the trail to pack down for that. And with our eight days of scouting, flagging, clearing, benching, and shaping, there's just one thing left to do. <laughs> yeah. Right now the trail is about 24 seconds long, which I might say isn't too bad. But now, with the planning out of the way, we can put a lot more effort into building new features and cutting more trail. <laughs> nah. Last week, I mentioned that Stone Starlet is just the lower section of a larger trail and that the middle section has been seeing progress from Chris and Bobby. They've been working on a pretty interesting ladder bridge with a few options. The main option is a roll that can be dropped if you go quick enough. And while that's not too bad, the second option is a little different. And it's something that nobody has ridden yet. I ride down a fallen tree with a wall ride using the root plate at the bottom. And I've been nominated to guinea pig this? <laughs> I've got to give Bobby an A plus for originality. I've never seen anything like this feature. And while we're on the topic of wooden features, well, stay tuned for next week. We're going to be building something pretty darn special. But as always, thanks for watching and stay gnarly. Oops. <laughs>